Hello, my name is Heidi Wonder, uh, for those of you who don't know, and um, I'm just excited to be here at Jesus is Lord Ministries today. I'm thankful for Pastor Yeager and his family um, that makes all this possible, the behind the scenes work that goes behind in um, getting these messages out every week. And um, of course, we're super grateful for Jesus Christ and um, all that he's done in our lives and going to continue to do. Um, the topic for today is, are you satisfied or are you sanctified? And so um, let's go ahead and open with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this day. God, I thank you for getting me and my children here safely this morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this pulpit, Father God, and preach your words, preach your gospel, share the good news of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you for the conviction that you're going to bring from the Holy Spirit today to each and every single one of us, including myself, a deeper conviction, a closer, more intimate walk with you. Lord, I pray that you would bless Kelly for watching my kids so that I can be here to speak today. God, I just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, all that you're going to continue to do in us and through us. Just continue to raise up more laborers, Father God, for your kingdom, Lord, because the the fields are ready, Lord, but we need more people to rise up to start sharing the gospel, to share the good news. I pray that your people would become uploaded with a boldness that they've never experienced before, Father God, that we wouldn't walk in fear and timidness, Father God, but we would walk in boldness like lions, but harmless as doves, as your words say. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Anoint my lips. I pray that everything that is spoken today is you through me, not one part of me, but all of you through me, that you get all the glory and that you get all the praise. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. I'm going to try not to keep messing with my hair. My daughter did it this morning and it keeps falling in my face. Okay. All right. So, um, I would like to start today again. The title is, are you satisfied or are you sanctified? And I would like to start in, um, John fourteen fifteen. It's a really short and sweet verse. John fourteen fifteen. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. And when I read this scripture, as Holy Spirit brought it to my attention, I was thinking, you know, how many of us as Christians, and I put that in quotation marks because I feel like that term is used so loosely, um, is that we say that we love him, but what part of our lives are reflecting our love for him? And, and I know I've touched on this before, but I just, the Holy Spirit just really brought this to an urgency. You know, there's a lot of believers right now that are saved and satisfied. They're saved and satisfied. They have their, I joke and call it the golden ticket to heaven. You know, they're, they prayed that prayer when they were six years old, however many years ago that was. And they just went to church ever since. And, and there's no real fruit. There's no real sanctification and transformation in their lives. Nothing has changed or, or maybe, you know, maybe you just prayed that prayer 10 years ago or something in your adult life, but there's nothing in your walk that changed. You just, you just prayed a prayer. You just prayed a prayer that someone told you to pray and they said, okay, now you're a Christian but there was no discipleship. There was no follow-up. You don't even know what that actually means to live a sanctified life. Justification is when we first come to Christ and He ju we get saved and he justifies us. But then the sanctification process is on us to walk through the fire to become closer to the Lord, to have him burn away the things of us that are of the world, to remove from us our pride, our lusts, um, our, our, um, sins that we just stay stuck in. He wants to heal us and deliver us from all those things. But again, we're saying, we're saying that we love him, 
We're saying that we're in love with him, yet nobody knows around us in our lives that we even go to church. Or maybe worse yet, you're like I was and went to church and was still partying during the week and living however I wanted during the week, but going to church Sunday morning. I was literally, when the Lord gave me this um, message, I literally began to weep and I was texting some sisters and I said, man, I said, I'm just so broken over how many people I may have turned away from God because I was saying I was a Christian and I was living just like them, if not worse. And I began to pray and ask God and repent and say, God, please forgive me for any one in those lost years of my life that I was claiming to know you and love you. And there was no love for you in my body. I knew of him. I knew of him, but I didn't know him. And so I asked the Lord to forgive me for how many people, whoever, the ones that I don't even know about, that I've turned away, put a sour taste in their mouth for Christians in church because of the lifestyle that I was living, the lukewarm lifestyle that in the kingdom of God, lukewarmness doesn't exist. It's something us believers brought up that, well, I'm just lukewarm. I'm not like all the way turned against God. We'll open up the word of God and see what God actually says about that. It scared the dickens out of me. He says he would rather we never knew him than to be lukewarm. And if we are lukewarm when he returns, he's going to spit us out of his mouth. That's what his word says, his convicting words. So this lukewarm Christianity that's floating around today and people walking in sin and walking in church, you need to get right with God. I'm telling you this because I love you. I'm telling you this because Christ brought this revelation to me and he loves you so much. He doesn't want you to be caught literally with your pants down when he comes back. I was going to church Sunday mornings and fornicating during the week. No one is going to tell me that I was going to enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says fornicators will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And to break it down, if you don't know what fornication is, it's sex before marriage. We need to start being a people that no longer looks like the world, but looks different from the world. We're saying, why don't the world want to, why don't the world want to go to heaven? Why don't they want to believe in Jesus? Well, we're doing the same thing they are. They don't, they don't understand that they need to change or do anything different because we're at the same party they are Friday night. So why would they just, add, why would they add a, a Sunday morning service, give up their only day to sleep in that week? to to add another thing to their schedule because that's all it looks like we're doing to them not actually living a lifestyle revealing the holiness of jesus christ but we're so muddied up with the world or we're so um what's the word i want to use we don't want confrontation we don't want to make anyone uncomfortable we need to start making people uncomfortable our lifestyles alone the words that are coming out of our mouth should be uncomfortable. You know, sometimes people, especially women can get caught up in this. They'll sit and listen to the gossip and they're saying, well, you know, I, I didn't say anything. I didn't participate. I just sat there. That is participation. If you are willing to sit in that circle with women and hear them gossip about other people, let me share something with you that my mother shared with me at a young age and it stood true to my 36 years, almost 36 years of life. If you are sitting with a woman and all she does every time you're with her is talk about other women, the second you walk away and you're not in that circle, what makes you think you're so special that you're not the next topic? Do not participate in gossip. If someone's gossiping, you say, you know what? Hey, ladies, I love you, but I can't sit in this conversation because we're talking about Sally and Sally's not even here to explain what's actually going on. 
And this includes, let me say, well, oh, I don't gossip. But if you're sitting there going, oh, did you notice that, um, you know, Sally and Jim Bob, I don't know, I'm coming up with crazy names, so I don't make pick anyone that's in our church. I'm just making something up. But like Sally and Jim Bob, did you see how they had a chair sitting between them today? They weren't sitting next to you. I wonder what's going on. I wonder if they're having marriage problems. That is gossip. And then the church wants to sit there and try to cover it up and say, oh, no, we're just concerned about them and we want to pray for them. Well, then don't be sitting there creating a scenario that you don't even know if it's true or not. If you truly cared and if you truly want to pray for them, say, hey, let's pray for Sally and Jim Bob. I just feel they're on my heart today. Let's pray. Let's lift them up or go right to Sally and Jim Bob. If the Holy Spirit leads you and say, hey, can I pray with you guys? And, you know, let them say yes or no, you know, or you can say, I've shared this before, or you can say, hey, maybe Sally did share with you that she's having marriage problems. You don't go to the ladies group and say, hey, everyone, let's pray for Sally. They're having marriage problems. No, she came to you with that information. You need to keep that information to yourself and say, hey, ladies, I know a couple that is struggling and fighting for their marriage. Let's get on our knees and fight for them, battle for them, that the Lord would heal and restore their marriage. Minus the names. God knows. God knows the details. So we need to stop doing this um, like a Christianese form of gossiping and, and saying, oh, it's because we're caring and we're concerned. No, you need to either have the people involved in the conversation or leave their names out of it, but still pray. Hear my heart. Still pray for them. Get other believers praying. Um, again, back to ha- the word of God says, if you love me, if you love someone. Okay. How many people love their favorite sports team? Or, you know, maybe you don't want to put the word love with it, but if you love something or someone, you talk about it the majority of the time. Think about people who love pets. A lot of their conversations about pets. There ain't no sin in that. There's nothing wrong with that. But do you talk more about your pets than Jesus? When your name comes to someone's mind, Do pets come to their mind or does Jesus come to their mind? I feel the Lord is calling us to come to an even deeper walk where I know a lot of times I'm talking about fornicating and partying and all that. And maybe you're like, Heidi, I can't relate to that. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. God wants us spotless with with that without spot or wrinkle. So that's including the side Christianese gossiping. That's including glorifying or lifting anything up anything we put before him is a sin it's a god it's an idol his word says if you love me you will obey my commands if you love someone you're constantly talking about them people love their pets they love their animals they love their sports they love their kids they love their grandkids they love their spouse their person they're dating their job their car their clothes you could literally look at a person's social media and regardless of what's coming out of their mouth you can find out what's most important to them or the things that mean the most to them and maybe some of you are feeling like Heidi you know right now you're just taking it too far I you know what I think Jesus dying on the cross was pretty extreme. I don't think I'm taking it too far for a man who sacrificed his life to give us the opportunity to go to heaven. He didn't die and you just get to go. There needs to be a sacrifice made on our part. We can't say we love him and, oh, Jesus, come into my heart. Now I'm going to heaven and continue to live however we want. If our own Lord had to make a sacrifice, what makes us think so proudly that we don't have to make sacrifices, that we don't have to make changes inside ourselves, that we don't have to bridle our tongues in and out of the house, not just at church Sunday morning. I've been that person screaming and yelling the whole way to church and then walk in with a smile on my face. What do you think I was showing my children? False doctrine, fake Christianity. I was turning them away from God. In my mind, I'm going, well, at least I'm getting them to church Sunday morning. I'm doing something right. No, I was I was confusing them more. I was twisting their brains. I was turning them away from God because I was living like hell and then trying to push them into church and church programs and, 
you know, thinking that made me the good parent. I was doing the right thing. No, your children are watching what you're doing at home. The one to three hours they spend a week in the sanctuary or at the church event or the Bible club, that's not going to transform their life. If you're doing that, praise God, keep doing it. Those are seeds being planted in your children that will never, ever be able to be stolen. They're planted in there and then someone's going to come and water them and praise God, do that. But don't think for one second that that is going to lead your family to Christ. It is the actions that you are living in your home in the day to day. That is what is going to lead them to Christ. And if you don't want to take on that responsibility, then be clear. Maybe today you're saying, you know what, Heidi, that that's just too much. Then stop walking around and calling yourself a Christian. I don't know if that sounds too harsh. It just came out of my mouth and I tell Holy Spirit to take over. So he's saying if we aren't going to live by the commandments, if we aren't going to illuminate Jesus Christ, then stop wearing the badge everywhere you go. Just take the badge off and continue to live how you want. But we have to at least, for the sake of souls, stop shaming the name of Jesus Christ. Stop turning people away from the church because of how we're living we, me included, all of us, we all have areas we can improve. We all have anger or bad attitudes we need to get under control. We all have, you know, anxious thoughts or whatever. We all have something. We all have some sin in our life that we struggle with. Don't sit here and focus on the things I'm labeling. Do self-inventory. What in my life? Lord, Holy Spirit, reveal to me what is it in my life that that would deter people from you. Holy Spirit, show us, reveal to us, cleanse us. He will speak to you. He will show you. He will reveal to you. You pray that prayer and you sit quietly and let him respond. He'll either show you in images You'll hear a still small voice. You'll have a thought. You think, is that me or is that the Lord? That's the Lord. You just asked the Lord to speak to you. All right. So we know what it looks like to love someone or something. We covered that. Okay. And then we know in John 14, 15, the word of God says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. So let's go see what the commands are. I already covered some of the things, but what the commandments let's let's break it simple there's a lot of things but let's go with me to the ten commandments in exodus excuse me exodus chapter 20 Bear with me. I'm going to be going back and forth between my notes and my phone and my Bible. Okay, so the first commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hey, maybe you're saying, you know what, Heidi? Oh, I don't have any other gods before me. God, I don't believe in Muhammad or whatever. I can't even think of anything else right now, but Buddha. I don't believe in that. I don't have any other gods before him. He's the only God. Okay. How many hours a day are you spending on social media? That one convicts me. How many hours a day are you spending binging television? You say, well, Heidi, I'm only watching the Andy Griffith show. There ain't no sin in that. No, you're right. There ain't no sin in that. And you know what? When I'm on social media, I'm posting scriptures. I'm sharing things about Jesus. Okay, okay. Praise God. I'm not saying they're sins. But the word of God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Anything. Again, we already covered this. Anything we're putting before him is a God. We read that scripture and think, oh, it's like a little God or something. No, anything, anything we're putting before him is a God. 
We all need to cry out to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and repent and start putting him first. He should be the one that we spend the most time with in a day. And maybe you're saying, Heidi, I work 60 plus hours a week. Where, where do I have time? Do it while you're driving. Do it while you're on the toilet. Do it while you're in the shower. Do it while you're cooking. You, you put God in all day long. I understand some of us don't have the lifestyles where we can go sit in a prayer closet for two hours. Jesus, get me to that place because that sounds phenomenal. I would love to be able to do that every single day, longer even. I would love to sit in his presence all day long. That's not a reality for me right now. There are other things that I have to take care of. But I'm not putting things before me. I'm praying while I'm working. I'm praying while I'm bathing my children. We're playing worship while we're cleaning the home. We're incorporating the Holy Spirit and a lifestyle of Christ in everything that we do. Not Wednesday night and Sunday morning. All day, every day. Eat, sleep, breathe, drink Jesus. Then people will know you love Jesus. Then guess what happens? The even better part. Don't be condemned by these commandments we're about to go over. Because here's the greatest part. And my sister in Christ, Brittany, texts me too. It's so good. When you actually fall in love with the Lord, like fully, not the knowing of that I used to think I loved him, but the knowing him, that love, you want to obey these commands. I used to have to fight off lust. Now, lustful thoughts don't even enter my mind. And I do not say that with pride. I do not say, look what Heidi Wonder did. I am telling you, look what Holy Spirit did. I used to pray, God, please help me. I don't want to think this way anymore. I don't want to do these things anymore. But I invited the Holy Spirit to come in and reconstruct my brain, reconstruct my thoughts, read the word of God to cleanse my mind, renew my mind, and boom, they're gone. They're gone. Those things, they aren't even desires of mine. They aren't even thoughts of mine because I think thoughts of the Lord. I think when I walk in the grocery store, who in here needs prayer? Who in here needs healed? Who in here needs salvation? We're constantly looking with the eyes of Christ, constantly thinking with the mind of Christ. That doesn't happen through a little prayer you prayed. That happens not even through the justification process. That happens through the sanctification process. You can literally get saved. And what I mean by saved and satisfied is you get saved and that's the last thing you do for the rest of your life. Sanctification is the changing of a lifestyle. Sanctification is a Holy Spirit convict me, reveal to me. You know, the cool thing about Christ is we can forever be growing in him until he comes back. We can forever be coming more like him until he comes back. You know, there's layers. I was just talking about this with my sister of Christ on the other day. There's layers to healing. There's layers to the sanctification process. Yeah, I don't have lustful thoughts anymore. Yeah, I'm not tempted to go out partying anymore. I don't even think those things. I don't even have those desires. Hallelujah, Jesus. He set me free and delivered me from all that. But you know what? I'm still praying, Lord, help me be at peace in whatever state I'm in and content. The Lord has me in James right now. To be content in whatever state I'm in. That means I don't fear. I don't get riled up. I don't lose my temper. I'm content. Regardless if the kids are acting up and fighting, I'm content. I'm at peace. Regardless if I don't have money for the next bill coming in, I'm content. I'm at peace. Regardless if someone comes and tries to attack you, I'm content. I'm at peace. I am so excited that Christ is taking me to and through the sanctification process of contentment, of contentment to be content in whatever state I'm in. That's what the word of God says. So be encouraged. Don't say, oh, you know what? Yeah, I broke off all that stuff. I'm living for God. I'm good to go. Nope. There's still some thoughts that you may be having that you shouldn't. Maybe you lose your temper, you know, 
maybe your language needs change. Maybe your thoughts needs change. Ask the Holy Spirit. If you think you're good, you're not. We all have an area we can work on. Sorry. Let's back up. Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. I'm not going to stay here long because we already covered this. Anything you worship more than God is a graven image. Cars, clothes, sports, jobs, um, family members, pets. These are dangerous because they're things that we worship and they can go away. Christ never goes away. That's why it's best for us to only worship him and nothing else. I'm not saying it's a sin to like your car or it's a sin to like your clothes. That's not what I'm saying. But when it consumes you more than Jesus Christ, that's where the sin comes in. That's when it becomes a graven image. <coughs> Exodus chapter 20 verse 7 says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That spells it out clear. This can mean using God's name like a swear word or it can mean saying you are a Christian but not living or acting like Jesus but wants you to act. We're taking his name in vain, not just verbally, right? Some people take it in vain verbally, but I like how the Lord revealed to me it's doing it when we're wearing that Christian badge that I was talking about. It's doing it when our Facebook profile says we go to this church and graduated from this Christian school and we're in this church club and then our whole feed is all about partying. That is using the Lord's name in vain. Our lifestyles, through our lifestyles, not just through our words. Exodus 20 Um. Going in order. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Exodus 20 verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. This is a whole nother. I could do a whole um, study on the Sabbath. I have learned as I've studied through the Sabbath um, that rest is so important to the Lord. When you think about when you read the Bible, it always says, and Jesus went away to pray or Jesus went up onto the mountain to pray. Like as he was ministering, as he was going along, doing what the Lord called him to do, there was rest in, in the service. He was, he was resting in between. He was resting as he was going. So you don't necessarily have to idolize a day for that is what I'm saying. But just to make sure that you are setting aside a time to be at rest in the Lord, to focus on him, where you're shutting out all the other distractions, you know, shutting out all the technology, shutting, just, you know, go outside and, and be in his presence and resting in him all throughout our day. The fifth commandment is honor thy father and thy mother. Exodus twenty twelve. It's important to show our parents respect. This may look different for everyone. Obviously, you know, if you're 10 years old, honoring your father and mother looks different if you're 36 years old. Um, but honor thy father and mother. Show respect to them. This scripture doesn't say honor thy father and mother if they honor you. It doesn't say that. It says honor thy father and mother. The sixth commandment is thou shalt not kill. And that's Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. The sixth commandment thou shalt not kill. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of you saying, Heidi, I've never killed anyone in my life. Have you done it in your heart, though? Have you done it in your mind? Have you hated someone so intensely? Maybe they hurt you. Maybe they molested you. Maybe they raped you. Maybe they abused you. Maybe they terrorized you. I don't know what your situation is. But is there anyone in your heart that you thought, man, my life would be better off if they were gone? If you've had that thought, if you've made that statement, you have committed murder. It's the same thing. 
The intent of the heart is the same as the actions. And so you need to repent. You need to ask God, please forgive me. Please forgive me for that thought I had, Lord. Because if not for the grace of God, there go I. If we think about it, we all deserve death for our sin. But we put levels on it. We say, well, this person did this and that's way worse. No, forgiveness is for everyone. There's no sin too great or too small that God cannot forgive. The seventh commandment says thou shalt not commit adultery. That's Exodus 20 verse 14. Men and women make promises to each other when they are married. These promises are important and breaking them causes deep sadness. It brings destruction to the home. It brings, it brings despair to families when lust is committed. Sorry, I'm trying to find this part in my notes here. Okay. All right, I don't have it, so I will do it off the cuff. So basically, same thing with murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. If you commit it in your heart, it's as if it was already so. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. There it is. Matthew, jump with me quick to Matthew 5, 27, verses 28. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 through 28 says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So maybe you're standing here with your badge again. Heidi, I never committed adultery. I never cheated on my wife. I never cheated on my husband. I never. You never had a lustful thought of another person. You never looked at another man or woman with lust. If you haven't, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. But if you have repent because the commandments, the Ten Commandments says you shall not commit adultery. And Matthew tells us in the book of Matthew, it tells us that if you did it in your heart, if you lusted in your heart, it's already been done. Repent. Jesus Christ is calling the church to repent. We're walking around in active sin, calling ourselves Christians, turning people away from Christ. We no longer just need to reach the lost. We need to reach the body of Christ to come back to a lifestyle of holiness. Christ is coming back for a spotless bride. I know I've already said this, but it's just so burdened on my heart because there's going to be so many people that think they're going to heaven and they're not. And Christ wants everyone to go to heaven. That's what his word says. I can't think of the reference right now, but it says it is the father's will that none should perish. He doesn't want anyone, not even the Marilyn Manson's or whoever, the you know, somebody really wicked that you can think about. He don't want none of them to perish. He wants them all to have salvation and spend eternity in heaven with him. But Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and sent his Holy Spirit to live in us so that we could reach more for the gospel, so that we could reach more for the kingdom. Jesus could only be in one town at one time. And then he got his 12 disciples and they got a little bit further. But then Christ realized, if I go up, we can send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to anoint all of these people to go out and explode the gospel. But we're not doing that. We're sitting, hoarding our ticket, waiting with every sign in the sky. Oh, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. And there's people dying and going to hell all around us. And all we care about is maybe this is the sign. Maybe now we get to go. Get us out of here, Lord. Our hearts should be burdened and weighted with those that don't even know, with those that have turned away because of the sin in our life. Our hearts should be burdened 
with those that don't want to know him because of the sin in our lives. We should be repenting daily, saying, God, reveal to me anything inside of me that's not pleasing to you. Show me anything, Holy Spirit, that's not pleasing to you. I want to be pure before you. And if a lustful thought comes, don't live in condemnation. The word of God says, take every thought captive. That lustful thought comes. I submit that demonic thought to the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke it from my mind to never, ever return and go on about your day. Don't sit there. The sin isn't the thought coming. Okay, because there's um, there's scriptures here in James chapter one, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried, it's coming. You're going to be tried. The lustful thoughts going to come. The thought to deceive is going to come. The thought to sit in the gossip gossip circle is going to come. Just sit here and don't say anything. So then you kind of fit in but you're not participating, you're participating. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. We're going to be tempted. Temptation is going to come. We live in a sinful world, but we take that temptation to Jesus Christ. And we say, here, Lord, I give it to you. There ain't sin in that. The sin is when you sit there and you dwell on the thought. You see the man or the woman walk by or whatever it is. Maybe it's food for you. Maybe you lust after food. That's a thing. I've done it. I've, I've, I've put my stomach before the Lord multiple times for years and he convicted me of that and transformed me of that. I was putting food. I was making food an idol. In in James chapter 1 verse 13 it says, "Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man." Verse 14. But every man is tempted. Guys, I'm not making this up. These are his words. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. I can't believe I'm going to be this transparent, but Holy Spirit is taking me there. When I was trying so hard to get set free years ago from masturbation, you're in your room. The enemy plants the seed. It's your choice to stay there and entertain the thought. It's your choice to stay there and make the very next move. It's when the thought came. I knew what was coming. I could see the enemies coming. He's coming to tempt me. You know what I would do? Jump up and run out of my bedroom. Jump up and run out of my bedroom. I'd go do dishes. I'd go um, play with my kids. I'd go mow the grass. I'd go be around people. Uh, oh, sorry. I would remove myself from the lust that the enemy was trying to tempt me into to try to entice me to pull me away. And there were times that I would fail and I'd feel so broken and dirty and filthy. It brought death. I wanted to die when I gave in to that temptation. I felt sick. I couldn't stand myself. And so when I realized I no longer wanted to feel like that, but I wanted to feel the peace, joy, love, life, freedom of Christ, I ran from sin do you guys see what changed? I actually love him now. I really, really love Jesus Christ now. And so when sin comes, I run from it. Someone, uh, someone recently had said something to me. They're like, you know, um, there's an, an event coming up. I'm going to be vague because I don't want people's names involved. There's an event coming up and they're like, 
oh, Heidi, you know, um, you could save money if you bunked up with so-and-so. And I said, you know, I know that's true. That is true if, you know, um, but this is an old girlfriend from my past that we did things that we, myself included, did things that weren't pleasing to the Lord. And I said, you know what? <laughs> my soul is worth more than $75 on a hotel room. I would rather pay the full price of the hotel room by myself with the Lord alone in his presence than to save a couple bucks and put myself in a room with someone that we have nothing in common, a person that we have sin connections with, a person that I don't want that relationship restored, nothing against you know, that person, I'm not condemning her. I'm not putting her down, but I, I want to be so far from that lifestyle. I want to be away from it. I don't want to be around people that are doing the things I used to do because I know that we have an enemy that wants to wipe me out and I don't want to be near sin. I, I want to stay far away from it because I fell in love with him now before I was just wearing my badge and I knew about him. But fulfilling the lust of my flesh, fulfilling the moment meant more to me. It wasn't until I fell in love with him and my eyes became set on eternity. that I don't care about what's happening right now, good or bad. And when I say I don't care, it's the contentment that James is talking about. Not that I don't care about you or what's happening today, but I know I must keep my eyes on Jesus Christ. I must keep my eyes on eternity and whatever's happening here right now isn't affecting, I can't have anything here right now affecting or separating me from eternity because I love him. I want to please him. I don't want to disappoint him. So no, you will be tempted. And when lust is con conceived, and like I said, you go on with the thought that's where the sin is. That's what brings death. But if the thought comes, don't live in condemnation. I rebuke that in Jesus name. Thank you, Father God. And then run out wherever you're at. Run out. Be with someone. Do something. Change your thought process. Run. The word of God says flee from sin. Okay, so back to Exodus. I'm wrapping up. I think we were on see what okay yeah that was seven so thou shalt not commit adultery okay um eight thou shalt not steal exodus 20 verse 15 says thou shalt not steal don't steal i don't think i need to spend a lot of time on there that's self-explanatory don't take something that's not yours if you see free pens sitting out don't grab 10 and say well they're free that's not what people mean by that. When you see a free bag of pens or pins or flyers, like take, you know, um, you know, or flyers or something like that, like Pastor Yeager puts out a lot of um, tracks, gospel tracks for us to hand out during the week to people. He has um, printed flyers for the services and the times that we have them here, you know, and they're for people to take and hand out. But you don't just grab a whole stack of them because they're free and they're there. No, grab a couple, hand them out, come back, get some more, grab a couple, hand them out. You know, so many times you see people, they'll just grab like a, they'll see something free and they grab a whole handful of it. You know, um, be mindful of that. <clears throat> Thou shalt not steal. Okay, then the ninth commandment. <clears throat> The ninth commandment says, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. And I wrote down what it means to bear false witness. Bear false witness means to speak unjustly against your neighbor. Talking about them, trying to ruin their reputation, lying about them, saying things that aren't true. Again, back to that speculating you're speculating and oh maybe this is happening or you know going on and on and and destroying that person's reputation and maybe 
wouldn't that be funny? Nothing's wrong with Sally and Jim Bob. It's just she's really feeling under the weather and was trying to leave room or or maybe she's having a hot flash and needs some space. We don't know what the purpose. Maybe they have the Bible sitting in the middle and they're sharing, reading the same Bible, but we done made up a whole thing. That's bearing false witness against our neighbor. It's against the commandments. And remember, let's trail back. If we love him, we keep his commands. These things should not be counted against us. <clears throat> the tenth and final commandment is thou shalt not covet. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Covet means to be so jealous of something someone else has that you want it desperately. Coveting will make a person miserable and keeps them from putting God first. Don't covet. Don't be jealous of something someone has. Maybe you're living in an apartment and renting and you see someone with a, with a home and you think if I could just have a home. But what you don't realize is the person that has a home, their mortgage is twice as much financially as your rent. What you don't realize is now they have to have homeowners insurance and they have to keep up with the lawn and they have to keep up with the house. And if something breaks down, you no longer just call the landlord. You're the landlord. It's on you. You got to replace the oven. You got to replace that. So there's pros and cons to wherever you're at in life. I've lived on both sides. There are, pro you know, I'm a homeowner now and praise God for that. I know God gave me that home. But, you know, when I'm out weeding and and I look, I'm like, oh, I got to do the power wash and my bushes need trimmed. And I just look around. There's so much that needs done on my house just on the outside. Then we go to the inside, you know. It's a lot and I'm not complaining by any means, but when I was renting, I just called the landlord. The landlord had someone mow the grass. The landlord had someone shovel the sidewalk. If there were, you know, ants in the house, I called the landlord. He sent the exterminator. I have to do all those things now. So there's, there's pros and cons to all sides. You shouldn't covet someone who is married. I used to think, oh, if I could just be married, you know what? I've been married and I've been single. There's pros and cons to both. You shouldn't covet that. Christ should be first. I no longer covet marriages. I just want to be with the Lord. And I want to work on making me be the best godly mother I can be to my children. And the best godly daughter I can be to my parents. And the best godly wife I can become for a future husband whenever the Lord sees fit but I'm not out here with binoculars trying to find someone. All that did was bring more pain and misery in my life. He gives us these commandments not to squash us down, but to lift us up. They're there to protect us. When you tell your kid not to play in the street, is it because you don't love them and you're trying to make their life miserable? No, it's because we tell them to not play in the street because we don't want them to get hit by a car and die. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ, he loves us so much. He puts these rules and commandments in our lives. So we have guidelines to follow because he knows the heaviness that sin brings. He knows the death and destruction that the sin and the lust when it's full birth, he knows what it brings. And he's trying to protect us from that. He's saying, don't see how close you can get to the fire without burning your hand Run as far away from the fire as you can so that you never get burned. Don't try to see how close you can get without getting burned. I have scars all over me from seeing how close I could get without getting burned. Don't let that be you. God has removed so many things from my life and I, things I thought I used to not be able to live without and now I'm living better without them. Allow him to come in, cleanse, renew. And when I say allow him to come in, you have to make the sacrifice. You have to make the work. You have to say, you know what? I only read my Bible for 10 minutes today, but it's seven o'clock at night and I only read my Bible 10 minutes, but I've watched two hours of television. I'm going to turn it off. I I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to read about this man who's coming back because I want to know, I want to be ready. I want to learn more about 
this man that I love so much so I look more like him so that others can get saved through my lifestyle. Not my words, but my actions. Real quick, I'm wrapping up here. We'll jump back to James. James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer, verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. God is saying we need to not only be hearers, but doers also. We need to not just be reading these things, but living these things so that others can come to know him. That's why Christ ascended to heaven to bring his Holy Spirit to anoint us to walk in this boldness, this faith, proclaiming this good news and getting people excited about it, explaining to them that it's through love. It's because he loves us. That's why we obey his commands. I'm not burdened. I'm set free now that I'm living in the commandments. Am I perfect? Not yet, but praise God, I'm striving to be. I'm striving to be perfect like Christ. Are you saved and satisfied this morning? Are you saved and content knowing that you're going to heaven? Or are you saved and sanctified? Are you spending time with the presence of the Lord every single day saying, refine me, refine me, refine me the next day? Holy Spirit, refine me, refine me, bridle my tongue, block out those lustful thoughts. Let me focus on the scripture that says whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure. You know, I was thinking the other day and I told my daughter, I want to write those scriptures out and post them in our house. What a way to live. What a way to live if every single one of us would take that passage alone and live our life through that. That way every thought that comes in, is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it true? No. Don't have space for it here. Only allow truth to come in and block out the lies. Live a sanctified life, not a satisfied. Allow Christ to come in and sanctify you. Cleanse yourself so that you actually look like the church and aren't just talking like the church. Ask Christ to renew your heart, renew your mind. Tell him that you actually want to know him, not know of him anymore from this day forward, that you want a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus, that when people think of you, they don't think, oh, there's the womanizer. Oh, there's the lady that's obsessed with her pets. Oh, there's that guy. He always talks about his job. He really loves it. Oh, here comes that mom talking about her kids again. They're going to say, here comes that woman of God. Here comes that man of God. Hey, there's there's Stephen, that, that man that's not shaken no matter what comes. There's, there's our sister in Christ, Kelly, no matter what falls on her lap, she continues to honor the Lord with her words, with her hands, with her feet, with her life. Let those be the things that are coming off people's mouths when we come walking towards them. Oh, hey, we better watch what we say. You know, Heidi's coming or... Johnny's coming or Sally's coming. Don't talk like that in front of them. Don't gossip. Don't say any bad words. She don't like that. He don't like that. Let that be the thing so that they know we're walking such a holy life that we begin to transform the room, not the room transforming us, not chameleon Christians leading people into the pits of hell. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. Father God, thank you for bringing us, your body, your people, to a place of repentance. Only then can revival ignite. Only then can there be a multitude of of the fields being, what's the word I want to use, picked, 
use for your kingdom more people wanting to come to know you live for you serve you god may we start with ourselves we're so quick to look out and point at the world but lord when you point your finger at someone there's three more pointing back at you so may we do self inventory may we purify our lives before you may we live holy lives sanctified lives for your kingdom, for your people, so that no man should perish. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for these words today. I pray that every single person would walk away convicted and drawn closer to the Lord, not condemned and pulling away this from the enemy, convicted and drawn closer to him. I pray this in your holy, precious name. Amen.